Um, so, hey everyone! I didn't think I would be making this video, but um, I am. Hi, how's everyone? Um, I feel really awkward uh, laughing, but when I feel awkward and nervous, I do laugh a lot, but genuinely, I hope that everyone is okay uh, during this time. Um, I don't know what any of my viewers are going through, but for any of you who are watching this video, I hope that you and your loved ones are staying safe, healthy. I just really wish the best for, honestly, everyone who is living. <laughs> like, this is so crazy. I am going to do a get ready with me. Because I'm so frazzled, you'll see me looking down a lot because I'm just looking at my notes. I actually made a video earlier, maybe this month or like last month, where I was like, I'm leaving YouTube. I'm probably not going to come back. And <laughs> I just never uploaded it because I was just like, what's what's the point of the video? And I'm still kind of like, what's the point of this video? But uh, I just figured I'll, I'll make it just cause. I don't know because that's what like people on YouTube do when they disappear. They come back and they're like, hey, this is why I was gone forever. I've just been really focusing on like what's going on in real life in my own personal life. I took a step back from social media. Like I got rid of my personal Facebook accounts. Um, I just stopped focusing on Instagram as much and even when I am on Instagram it's usually for a very short amount of time and the biggest thing is I, I really wanted to work on my mental health and when I turned 30 I told myself that this is going to be one of the best decades of my life like this is when I'm truly living because in my 20s I was so unhappy I look back at myself in my 20s and I don't want to say wasted time because that sounds so depressing and you know because of how I was like in my 20s I was able to grow and learn a lot from those experiences so I don't want to poo poo my 20s but when I turned 30 I told myself I'm gonna live selfishly like I'm gonna focus on myself like I feel like if Throughout my entire life, I focused so much on what people thought about me, how others perceived me, like, do they like me, um, am, am I rude, like, do people think I'm, I don't know, like, I just had so many insecurities about myself, and uh, I struggled a lot with my mental health, and I figured that, um, you know, maybe if I come back to YouTube, even for a very short amount of time, um, I, okay, where the hell is my foundation? Oh, there it is. I thought about uh, focusing my channel on, like, truly what I want to talk about, and, you know, just, like, put random stories out there about uh, just my journey in regards to uh, various different things, and mental health, oh my god, wait, what the heck? Wait, what? I am so confused. Okay, it, this foundation is lighter than my usual face, but what? what is this? Uh, that is... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Never mind. I guess I just didn't shake it enough. That was a little bit frightening. Um, anyway, um, I've been really focusing on my mental health and... I, I don't know, I still feel very mixed emotions about uh, putting it out there in such a public forum. You know, unfortunately, m mental illness is still very much stigmatized and it can affect uh, how things are for me in my, like, real life. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. So that is what I am concerned about. But at the same time, like, I, I kind of just want to talk about it. Why do I want to put it in the public? I don't know. Maybe I'm like a narcissist. Uh, but it's, it's been something I've been thinking about. And, um, and the reason why I actually decided to come back to YouTube, whether it's temporary or for a long period of time, I don't know. Um, is is actually because I got furloughed from work and um, I'm focusing on my hobbies like this furlough has helped me focus on myself and kind of tested me as to like where my mental health is at and knock on wood uh, it'll continue 
to be good. But like when I made the video I mentioned um, earlier about how I'm just not gonna come back to YouTube, I still had my job and I mean I guess technically I still have my job but you know like I was working pretty much from 9 to 6 Monday to Friday and now that I don't have to work I have a lot of free time and I'm going back to my hobbies and I figured like hey why not make YouTube one of them it's like I have no excuse to not do anything and I think it's totally fine to vegetate like I did that this weekend it was great, I'm still gonna vegetate even more, but like I actually woke up this morning and I'm like, you know what, I want to take selfies and I want to make a YouTube video. And in the past that always seemed like such a big pain in the butt, like it just felt like a huge obligation. I never really wanted to do it, or like rarely did I want to do it. But today I actually woke up and I was like, you know, might be something fun to do today so why not do it so going back to like making my 30s all about me um it has been crazy i don't know like what kind of weird thing happened once i turned 30 but i swear to god i am like the most boring person in existence and somehow like once i was like i'm gonna make you know this year my best year like i'm really gonna start living my life Things just got crazy. I don't know what it is. Like, I thought once I became so sure of myself, like, you know, it was, like, externally, nothing was going to happen. Like, I was just going to be happier. But <laughs> some crazy things happened in my personal life, and I kind of want to talk about that on YouTube because, honestly, YouTube has helped me so much. Like, I know that sounds so weird coming from, like, a 30-year-old, but honestly, like, watching videos about people's experiences really helped me a lot, like, on how to come come to terms with my identity and just like how to handle situations I was going through that I just felt really confused about and none of my real life friends really understood what I was going through so it was just nice to find other people on YouTube talking about their experiences that I really related to. It was also really nice not focusing on Lolita fashion and social media because um you know Lolita's kind of a pricey hobby depending on like where you are. Some people might be like Lolita is such a cheap hobby. I think for me it's a pretty expensive hobby. So once I stopped focusing on Lolita like I started giving more attention to my friends because honestly before I would be like I would always be budgeting like this is how much I'm gonna spend like hanging out with my friends. This is how much I'm spending on Lolita but now that the whole Lolita budget is gone um, I was able to focus more on my friends and once I started working on my mental health, like, it didn't seem so hard hanging out with my real life friends. Because before, hanging out with my real life friends seemed like such a chore. And like, I don't mean that in the sense that I hate my friends or I think they're tiresome. It's just, I physically felt so tired. And I also felt so anxious seeing my friends. I genuinely did and I was talking to one of my close friends about this and she's like I am so glad you're in a happier place she's like do you remember when you used to say that you thought that we were your friends because you thought we felt bad for you and I was like wow that like that kind of does sound like something my old self would say but that is just crazy that I would say things like that and I can't thank my friends enough for the support that they've given me like working through my mental health if it wasn't for my friends um my doctors um and having a job that i love and honestly like great british bake-off now that my <laughs> now that my netflix subscription ended and um well honestly it was just a netflix free trial <laughs> that ended and i watched all the seasons that they have of great british bake-off i'm just like what is going to fill the void that that has left me because that show was just so wholesome and happy and like I just loved the vibe of the whole show. I loved how everyone was so cooperative and people weren't like I'm not here to make friends which I just do not understand why people say that in competition shows. So seeing people help each other out and make like really cool things out of you know food. I don't know. I, 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 I've been loving it. So 
now that that is no longer an option i'm just like what's gonna fill the void making youtube videos so i've also been working on my hobbies so pretty much like <laughs> lolita was the main hobby that i had and now i'm working on other hobbies particularly photography and uh i created a new instagram account which i'll link below if you guys want to follow but i'm, I'm just practicing on myself which is kind of awkward but I, I would love to eventually take pictures of other people but i want to be well versed enough so that I'm not wasting people's time like if I get a model because I don't want to be like oh wait like I don't know how to like this so like give me like 20 minutes like I want to know what I need to do to get the effects that I want so I've been using myself as a guinea pig and it's been kind of fun like honestly when I'm on uh Instagram or like when I was on Facebook I would look at pictures of my friends and I'd be like wow I'm kind of envious of people having pictures of themselves looking so like looking a certain way like I kind of want that and you know I kind of do regret not continuing taking outfit photos because before I loved doing that with Lolita it was like a nice little timeline of what I looked like and I don't really have that from recent years so I think this is like another way to do that like another way to be narcissistic and productive at the same time and I don't really think there's like anything wrong with narcissism per se it's just like a bit awkward for me because I've I've just felt so self-conscious about my appearance so this is kind of new to do something like this uh but I think it's a good exercise um it, it's maybe a good way to learn how to be more comfortable in my skin so right now what I'm doing is getting ready for my selfie session and I think that the only time I'll probably make YouTube videos is when um, I'm putting on makeup although I really wanted to make skincare videos um, and such uh, because I I think my skin has been getting a lot better like I'm pretty happy with my skincare journey right now okay I'm like trying to make myself look really flush like people from those old magazines who have like the pinkest cheeks ever will this even show up in my pictures I don't know but <laughs> I'm like I just want to be super rosy I also wanted to make videos on like dyeing my hair um, kind of do like mini review videos I don't know like that's sort of what I'm thinking of. Also like random rants. Uh, I don't know if rants is the right word. Thought pieces? That sounds like so bougie, but like just talking into the void. Uh, like maybe working things out in my head in regards to my thoughts. Also I wanted to make a few Lolita videos to it if I felt in the mood for it because um, I actually have three packages I think that I still haven't opened. <laughs> because I kept saying like I'll make a video uh for it like a haul video but um yeah I think I'll probably do that <laughs> and what else um oh I also wanted to make like an updated like Lolita journey video but one thing I really want to do in regards to Lolita videos is continue my interview series I don't know if you've watched that but that was something I really enjoy doing I always love meeting new people talking to people I don't know just learning about people's experiences and that is something I would love to go back to I don't know how I mean especially right now because of the pandemic but all of that aside, like even when all of this passes, I'm not exactly sure like how I will interview people. So um, if you're a Lolita and you're in the LA area uh, and if you would like to be interviewed, I will 
uh, link the playlist of the interviews that I've done before below so that you could kind of see what kind of questions you would be asked but honestly if you're Lolita in this in the LA area I would love to interview you so for people who have been my subscribers if you're watching this what have you guys been up to like are you guys still into Lolita have you moved on to something else how are you holding up the pandemic like are you okay oh also since I'm not into Lolita fashion anymore I actually started going back into my love for vintage fashion which started in high school like once I saw Marilyn Monroe and gentlemen prefer blondes like that was love at first sight like I just loved her clothes and then when I saw her in how to become a millionaire no how to marry a millionaire oh my god I should actually know this title for so many reasons I'm pretty sure it's how to marry a millionaire um I just loved the clothes so I'm like you know the prices are like pretty much the same as Lolita so I'm gonna like invest in that and this will be mentioned in my Lolita fashion journey but I've been actually working on cleaning out my Lolita collection and I'm pretty proud of myself and I think that I'll be uh, adding even more things to the pile of clothes I need to sell honestly like I'm just I am way too lazy to actually get selling that's the thing like I have all the clothes out they're all in bins they're all ready to be sold but I am just too lazy to actually do the lace market listings and for someone oh my god there's someone I actually owe a dress to like thank the lord I did not get any money from them but I am so sorry for being irresponsible but I, I I'm like I am just too busy and now I really can't go to the post office like I, I just do not want to during this time to deal with shipping costs and such but I will message you on Instagram when the listing is up on lace market and if you're still interested in the dress um, it's yours like I'll have it reserved in case you want it so you can have first dips on that dress but um, I'm I just realized that uh, like I love Lolita fashion of course I'm gonna keep like enough pieces to have so that you whenever I want to dress up it's an option but um, the pieces I'm gonna keep are mostly just going to be pieces I want to use for like my photo shoots okay it's truly just a selfie session is what it is let's be real but that's what I want to keep it as like they're just like nice props to to have and they're so beautiful to look at so that's what I'm gonna keep the ones I'm keeping like as everything else um, I'm just gonna sell off because I really don't see a, a need for them um, I'm like kind of looking into redecorating my room but I don't think that's possible because of just like how little space I have and just how much stuff I have it's ridiculous like I need to downsize but I just love stuff like I truly am a hoarder and like even if I did marry condo I'm like I've downsized as much as I can. Everything that I have now gives me joy. Like, what else am I supposed to do? Gosh, I really should have watched that Marie Kondo show on Netflix while I still had it. <laughs> because, um, or I guess I could read the book. Um, because, I don't know, maybe Marie has some good advice on how to deal with my predicament when you're just like, I love everything. I can't live without this. Like, but on the bright side, I've been really good about throwing away things I haven't been used using in decades. Like, thank the Lord I've been doing that. Now I just have so many props for my little photo shoot ideas. It's getting ridiculous. It honestly is. And I have this idea of like what I want my place to look like. But I think that that can probably only happen when I finally move out. And oh, that's like another thing I've been thinking about like like due to my job circumstances it's gonna be pretty hard to move right now like even if I wasn't furloughed um it would be pretty difficult but um my like five to ten year plan is to get a studio in Burbank and just like live a, a modest life you know and, and decorate it the way I want to and you know stuff like that because I feel like right now because I do live with my parents I feel very stifled and honestly um a big part of the reason why I can't move out is because I do take care of them and 
I just financially do not have the means to support myself independently living in Los Angeles and also to support a whole nother family like and I don't have a significant other I, I I'm not married so it's not like I have dual income to help me do these things so financially it's just not feasible for me to move out but right now I'm like you know saving more money um also like cutting out Lolita has helped me save so much money like the amount of money I was spending on Lolita fashion was incredible I mean you could you could probably tell just from the sheer size of my wardrobe and even though I am now focusing more on my friends and you know going to like great places to eat like that amount of money is still a drop in the bucket compared to how much I was spending on Lolita so my savings is like looking really good right now which I'm very proud of um and I mean thankfully that savings is coming helpful during this time although like if I'm furloughed for a whole year um I don't know my family and I are making adjustments right now to like see what we can do to cut down our current spending and you know like right now what we're doing is food like we're not buying junk food we're not buying like little treats we're not buying soda like we're just buying necessities and oh my god my mom is such a huge hoarder of food but I told her I'm like look we just need to eat everything that's in the freaking fridge and when it's kind of like an empty that's when we can go grocery shopping it's probably you know a better idea to do that for our general health because we're not exposing ourselves to like the outside world as much but also we're spending less money so that's kind of like how we're dealing with it and honestly it has been kind of weird not having a hobby that's not focused so much on consumerism because before it was like skincare makeup like lolita those were the things taking up so much of my money but now i'm like I have everything that I could like ever want and need and more. It has been amazing just being able to spend money on my friends and like not worry like if I spend this much money will I not be able to buy this new angelic pretty release like honestly that's how my mind was before and it is so nice not having to think that way and just being like hey friends like I want to treat you to this dinner and I can't and like no biggie. Like, just don't buy the $1,000 wine. Like, that's a no-no. But, every, like, the food on the menu, like, you could get whatever you want. And it's just been so great being able to treat my friends to things like that and not worry about money. It's just been nice, like, focusing more on my friends. And I, I feel like I, I've been a better friend, too, just in general, now that my mental health is better. And it made me so happy when... I met like my mentors and even my friends who are like I could see the change in you and that makes me really happy because I, I, I worked really hard on uh, trying to I don't want to say like become a better person but maybe like trying to become the like a better version of myself or trying to emphasize the the good points of myself and my mentor told me he's like I don't know what it is but you just seem more confident and and he's like it's just really good he's like I really like where you are right now and he's like I'm just so proud of you he's like I can't put my finger on it and he's like I don't mean this as an insult but he's like I feel like you're doing really well and I was like yes like thank you like I it just kind of felt validating to hear another person who I didn't really talk to about my mental health um notice that something did change and you know my friends also told me like hey like I could really tell that you're a lot happier you're not as self-deprecating and that that is really validating and um I, I really hope that I can continue to be like a ball of sunshine for people around me and like of course I'm not perfect I will have my days when I'm depressed and of course I will have times when I'm self-deprecating but um I just hope that I won't be such a like a poo pet like because there's so many times when I look back at interactions I've had with people and I'm just like oh my god I I I don't it's kind of embarrassing because it it was just so obvious as to how bitter I was and how unhappy I was and I guess kind of feel bad that I subjected people to that 
and there are like a couple of friends that I lost uh, because of that but um, I'm just like impressed by the people who stuck through because I can be pretty crazy like I could be really out there and my friends deserve so much credit for sticking with me like what would I have done without them I don't know also like I sound so new agey and like hippie-ish although I was talking to my friend about like being hippie-ish and she's like that's not a bad thing and I'm like you're right it isn't because it does align with like my views oh this this lip situation is not going how I thought of in my head. But I've just been really working towards not comparing myself to others. And I'll still have days when I compare myself, of course. But I try to catch myself. And when I see myself getting jealous, uh, I, I just try to shut that down ASAP. That's why I don't really go on Instagram that much. Pretty much I go there too post my pictures maybe go there like when I feel when I want some inspiration for my pictures and like if I want to see a cute cat like I just purposely look up like British short hair tag you know like that so I don't see things that would make me feel jealous I and um maybe it's not like the best thing to try to avoid things but at the same time like that is what's keeping me sane right now and i know that my mental health is still in a precarious situation so i'm just doing the best i can to be sane during this time and you know i am slowly slowly building up my armor and uh you know like i hope that one day i can just use social media like without feeling jealous but I've noticed uh like more positive changes in myself where like rather than feeling envious I just feel happy for people like before when I would look on Instagram or Facebook uh I would kind of get envious like gosh like I'm not in Bora Bora or I don't have a six-figure job and I couldn't help but compare myself but now like I've noticed that my thought process has shifted where rather than making those posts about me, I've been making it more about like the people posting them. Like, like wow, I am just so happy for these people. Like they're getting married or like they went on this great vacation like or like they had this great meal. I, I genuinely feel happy for them. And I think that's what I loved about Great British Bake Off because rather than get into like a mean competitive spirit, it was just like nice to see camaraderie and and like people just being genuinely happy for each other and like honestly I hated it when those like uh competitors had to leave the show because I'm just like I just want everyone to win like they worked so hard and it's like I don't know I'm kind of like tearing up but it's like I just I just felt genuinely like attached to these people and I'm like you know there's no bad guy so I don't know. I just love that show. It just makes me so happy. It's just so wholesome. Ah, oh, oh, I am feeling so overheated right now. First row problems. Anywho, uh, thank you for your time watching this video. Um, maybe I'll be back. Maybe I won't be. Who knows? I mean, I'm just gonna play it by ear. So I'm gonna go take some selfies. I hope that every one of you and everyone in the world is staying safe, um, you know, social distancing, listen to your local governments, all of that stuff. So um, maybe I'll see you. Maybe I won't. Um, link to my new Instagram will be in the description box and um, so will all the products that I use and all the clothes I'm wearing, blah blah. You know the drill. It's all below. So I'm gonna go take some selfies, be a narcissist, and yep, that's it. Toodles!